The Big Fight Live is back. Josh Kelly continues his world title pursuit against Lucas Bastida for the WBO International Super Welterweight Crown. Don't miss all the action live in The Big Fight Live, Kelly vs. Bastida, Saturday at 10 on Channel 5. This is Harry Judd for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're here at the Josh Kelly and Lucas Bastida fight here in Newcastle. I'm with the one and only George Groves. How are we? I'm good. I'm really good. Thank you. In terms of you, what's, what's been going on? Uh, not an awful lot. Not an awful lot. Um, got, I'm, I'm, re I'm releasing a new podcast this week, which is quite exciting. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, we're going to ask for this. got a little bit of my time, a bit of my time. So that's uh, something that I've... Um, yeah, I've been really excited to, to sort of get to good food. We've been spent a couple of months now recording some shows. It's going to be a, a boxing-based podcast. It's going to come out weekly. We're going to get different different people from the boxing world on to discuss different aspects of boxing, which is um, hopefully going to be really insightful and, and timeless for people. So, uh, Crollo standing beside me. I need to get him on soon to tell me something that, that that's quite specific to him. But we've got we've had uh, we've got promoters on talking about tournaments. We've got uh, solicitors on talking about contracts. We've got fighters talking on a, <laughs> about fighting so yeah we're looking forward to it it's come out this week George Groves Boxing Club we can't get enough of boxing podcasts that's for sure so we look out for that but we're here tonight for the main event Josh Kelly and Lucas Pasida how do you see that happening yeah it's an interesting fight I mean I don't know an awful lot about Bastida, but I, you know, I checked him out before coming, well, before before this evening, um, and he looks kind of um, like he likes to fight at a loose pace. You know, he's a um, bit of a, a bit of an explosive fighter. You know, he's a bit of a power puncher. He lets his hands drift um, at times. Sometimes they're not always up covering his head. So um, it could be a bit of a shootout at some point. Um, Josh, Josh Kelly, obviously. Uh, on the, you know the rebuild now back up now up at uh, like middleweight so um, you know this will be a good win for him against a guy who's here to win I'm sure um, but it could be fascinating you know it could one of the fights that if neither neither man has sort of got to grips with the fight in the first couple of rounds could could go either way we don't know an awful lot about Bastida but imagine here in Newcastle Josh Kelly. Um, go out there and, and, and get a good solid win. Um, we'll look to put him away. Um, so either way, it looks for a good fight. What's also interesting is the, the British title clash between Troy Williamson and Josh Kelly. Uh, Troy is here tonight um, wearing a Newcastle jersey, which is going to um, do some business when he gets in there. What do you make of that fight? We'll blend in. Like, I haven't been to Newcastle that often, but I've never seen so many football jerseys in the town as, as I have here. Uh, I think one in five have got a Newcastle top on, so when in Newcastle, why not, eh? Um, it could be, uh, yeah, like a red, <laughs> red Sunderland shirt, red, red rag to a ball. Exactly. So, uh, no, good. It builds for a good fight. Um, obviously, Josh Kelly wants to go out and get, get a good win to, to, to here this evening, but, yeah, that, that builds for, for a great fight. And... Um, yeah, thanks, 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 thanks for the boxing fans to be, to be um, excited about. While you're here, I'll get your, your views on some other matters within boxing. What broke this morning um, was that the WBC would recognise uh, Jake Paul in the ranking if he beats um, Junior um, in his clash. What do you make of that? Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great publicity stunt from WBC. Very clever on their behalf. Um, you know, he's a big, he's a big name in, in, within the boxing world right now, uh, Jake Paul. So they've decided we'll have a bit of you. They've latched onto him, hand him a, hand him a ranking. Uh, there'll be some sort of belt attached to that ranking, I'm sure. Um, maybe some sort of like YouTuber belt or something. They create something. They're very good at that WBC. Um, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that uh, if he does put him in the rankings, then he's going to have to fight ranked fighters. You know, so. Um, Everyone, everyone gets frustrated with Jake Paul because you know he, he talks such a big game and he has no pedigree to back it up. But he he lives and breathes it by all accounts, by the looks of it. He trains hard. He employs you know um, experienced people to get him ready. Uh, so we just need a bit, a few more real fights out of him to know how, how far he'll go. If he doesn't have them real fights, then no one's ever going to believe him. Uh, but if he if he wants to actually challenge for a world title one day. Uh, step in the right direction. Um, so yeah, all good, all good. It's nice, nice. Everyone likes to win a belt. I want to see a belt. Does it? Does he deserve it though? You've got fighters that have lived and dedicated their life to the sport and come up the hard way and 
for someone that has such a big social following um, to just after one really one fight with a professional rank but well with a professional boxer to get an actual WBC ranking no it doesn't but what the fuck boxing ain't fair is it it's not it's not a fair game uh, people get looked over trod on forgotten about cheated robbed just fucking it's the wild west do you know what I mean eat or you know uh, kill or be killed um, survival of the fittest you make your own luck in this world in that respect and um, if he's got that platform to take advantage of it, you know, who, who, who would not? Um, the danger would be, um, from a moral point of view, from a higher ground, from, an, you know, from the people that are, can actually pull the strings and control um, you know, the boxing world, is you give this guy this platform and then young kids, 14, 15, 16, they want to become professional boxers, do they go down the conventional route of trying to win junior ABAs and senior ABAs, box ring and go to Olympics? work their way through the rankings or they try and build a social media following, you know? Uh, do they go on TOWIE or um, something? Some Love, sex Island. Love Island. Yeah. I don't, uh, yeah. <laughs> watch them. Yeah. Love Island. Yeah. Trying, that was the one I was trying to get. Right. Go that way. Woom. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you, you might get a TV deal uh, or you definitely get signed up by a promoter. Um, you know, but you still got to learn to fight because you get exposed at one point. Um, and boxing, you know, <laughs> We want to see, we want to see the best fight, the best. We want people to actually get there and improve as a sport. You know, I, I spoke to someone recently who says, "Oh, with all the, you know, the advances in training and um, weight making, and nutrition, and things like, fighters essentially saying a fighter's better now than they ever were." But it's like, well, no, we'll never know that. You can never compete. It's not a first past the post. It's not a timed event. You know, you always go through and say, "Would, would, would, uh, would the best middleweights in the world beat Marvin Hagler?" You know, best middle, would Marvin Hagler beat? Robinson, which is, you know, these are all hypotheticals that we'll never get an answer to. So, who knows, you know? Uh, but we, we, we <laughs> back to my original point is, we want kids to learn how to box the right way, uh, and that that, that it, it'll always come that way. We've always had uh, circus events throughout history. I'm sure, you know. Uh, Paul is just the, the one at the moment who's getting all the limelight. Uh, and good on him. Good on him. I, I, mean, I would love to see him in a real fight because I'd like to see how good he is. I have to ask, um, one of your, your, your old uh, enemies, uh, Carl Froch, came out and said he wished that Jake Paul would call him out. What do you make of that fight? Paul versus Froch. I mean, that would be a great fight. Uh, Froch giving away a lot of size, but he's got a good chin. He's got a bit of a bit old, older legs. But uh, I can imagine he'll still, he'll still uh, take them, them, them older legs up the hills and get the runs in, get the sprints in, get himself fit, do his old ton-up circuit, you know, some chins and dips and press-ups, and, uh, and he'll gunsling from the ankles and he'll try and get rid of Paul. Be a great fight. I'll be up for that. Puffin Paul back himself. That's a good, it's a good fight for Paul. He's an ex-world champion, semi-current, you know, in that Frosch is still working a lot on TV. We still see him. Um, father, Paul will probably think, ah, father time's caught up on him. I'll get hold of him. I'll beat him up. Um, I want to see it happen. I think it'll be good. Uh, Whose who's corner will I be in? I don't know. <laughs> I'd love to see you on the commentary for that one. Yeah, I'll be on the comms for that. Uh, yeah, no, I'll, 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 do what, I'll do what Carl did for me. Like, it was a beautiful moment when I won my belt. Carl took the headphones off, he stood up and clapped. And if he stopped Jake Paul, it'd be this, a similar moment. I'll be so enthralled and <laughs> oh, what an achievement. I'll take the headphones off on the stand and give him a round of applause. Um, and, he, and he also get a WBC ranking for it. So uh, everyone's a winner. Everyone's a winner. Um, also, one of your other ex-opponents is Chris Eubank Jr. Um, there's still discussions, are we here, of the Conor Ben and Chris Eubank Jr. fight. Um, you've been in the ring with Chris. Um, what do you make of that fight? Yeah, I think it's a mismatch, to be honest, just on size alone, he's too big, like, uh, Eubank Jr. is just too big, he's comp competed at super middleweight, um, for me, you know, uh, for others at super middleweight, he's down at middleweight now, and it looks, he looks pretty tight at middleweight, I can't see how he's going to get much lighter, he might do it for the, for the, for the Ben fight, because he thinks this guy's too small, and there'd be a lot of money at stake, a lot of profile, it might open a lot of doors for him to, to move on, but um, yeah, for me, it's, it's not the right move for, for Conor Ben personally. I mean, he might prove me wrong, and you know, you know, whenever if, if you've got something wrong, then you're happy to admit that. But I just think 
he's doing really well at the moment. He's boxing well. You know, he's uh, he's still still learning his craft. He's you know he hasn't been in that many huge fights. Why go into this fight? Give away all the natural advantages. Giving away uh, experience, size. Um, it's not it's not it's not the wisest move on my behalf um I'm not sure why that this fight is like now it's getting made but um it'll be fascinating and it will capture the public's imagination everyone will be invested and no one's going to miss it everyone's going to want to see it so it carries this weight and uh but for me i don't I, great fight for for eubank because of the size not a great fight for them i'll have to push you on a prediction I think Eubank beats him. I think Eubank beats him on size. You know, you never know if, if there is like a weight cut that's tough for Junior and there's rehydration um, stipulations that he has to adhere to and stuff like that. But uh, then you're worried about him being dangerous. You know, I don't want to see a fighter fighting with severely dehydrated. That's how you end up with a brain injury. Um, but if a prediction on the, on the fight, I think, I think, I don't think Eubank would let would fight if that was that was the case and i think he beats him i think he's too big and then lastly um obviously joshua usik comes up in a few weeks time you previously said you wasn't wouldn't be surprised if usik beat joshua that turned out to be true were you surprised in how joshua went in on that fight uh well no like you never know with heavyweights that's the thing with heavyweights you never know like the one big punch it can change the fight in your momentum um you're thinking can um Usyk deal with the size and take the power but nothing really landed that heavy on him he didn't look in trouble at all um he found his range really easy um Usyk's just he's, he's a class act he's he fights like a middleweight uh in a heavyweight frame now and he's the only heavyweight out there who can do that you know there's no, there's no other heavyweight on the planet who can create the angles he does who has his boxing brain the boxing ability the, the, main, the variety in the punches the main, he can vary his power he was touching joshua with one two three four five just touch him touch, touch, touch and then whip a big shot like you usually won't have that sort of time to get away with that behavior at world level you know you get a touch touch and you get whacked back or the guy creates distance and defends or you know counts it somehow uh but he could do that and i think i think i think he will improve you know he's it's only his third fight as a heavyweight i think so now he'll be supremely confident going into this fight he travels well um he's been all over the world boxing winning beating people in their back garden so um i think he'll be a big favorite going into this fight and yeah i think i think he he wins again